Hello, guys and girls. Welcome to the Be More podcast. I am back and I am very, very pleased to be joined by a very special guest. Richie and Kana is with us today, guys. Insane story. I've literally just read his book. And as soon as I finished, I was like, Richie, you need to come on the show and tell us more about yourself, your story um, and this unbelievable book that you've just written, mate. So, Richie, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Thanks, Jack. Thanks. It's great to be here, guys. Um, yeah, so this I'm Richie, um, author of uh, Body and Band Connection. Really excited to share this book. And as Jack mentioned, I think this is pretty much the book is all encapsulated based on my story, pretty much um, the struggles I faced. So it's pretty much my mess into a message. But what I found soon enough is that I was not the only one facing those challenges, right? There are plenty of other people facing the same challenges, you know, be it parents, be it professionals, whatever it is. So a bit of a background. My background is in finance. Um, I'm a child accountant by profession. Uh, but what I found is over time, you know, I struggled to work on my health and fitness owing to the fact that I was sort of busy, right? And that's where life takes over. You get a family, you work, and uh, what easily gives is your health and fitness. And then I sort of like got scared at one point because I got health conditions that run in my family, uh, which made me think twice. But it got me to go back to the drawing board because what we have normally when it comes to exercise and fitness is that we have to spend hours in the gym right to get the benefits of a good workout that we're looking for and in my case I did not have that I did not have that luxury I was trying to work on my career to get ahead as much as I could I did not have the time to do that so the easiest option at that point because I was worried about my health owing to a health condition running my family I looked at running um, running was a good option at that point I started doing that but in so doing, unfortunately, just a few months down the line, it was helping with work. I dropped some weight. I picked up an injury. I tore my Achilles. That was devastating uh, because, you know, with, when you tear your Achilles, <laughs> that can, you can be off the shelf, like, for about a, it could take about a year for you to uh, sort of, like, get back into it. So I started researching because I was, at that point, it's like, I need to find a workout that is not only uh, efficient, but also safe for my body, right? And so I can still work on my career path, right? As well as uh, get in shape, get the benefits of a workout. So I started researching. Um, then just to get myself better, I studied uh, sports therapy so I could just uh, help myself heal up. I love this stuff so much that I ended up being certified in that area. I was like, wow, okay, great. I applied the same um, strategies and stuff I learned from sports therapy, and I, I was back, you know, in record time, which is amazing. I was like, right, now I need to look at exercises that are efficient. At that point, then I went on back on a drawing board. So I started, I became a PT, <laughs> sort of chap, right? And it was just for the fun of it, just to help myself build my body, right? So I became a PT uh, so I can put my own program together. Um, that was okay. Then I started metabolic conditioning. Um, the metabolic conditioning was like, wow, this is, how is it that you can work out in a very short space of time and actually get the benefit? I'm quite skeptical about it. Let me give it a shot. And the results I got at that point were amazing. I was like, wow, this stuff actually works. Why don't people know about this stuff? So I studied that stuff. I became certified as a metabolic conditioning coach. I was like, wow, okay, now it's 60 million cards. Maybe let's look at nutrition. <laughs> so it was sort of like it evolved into that. I studied sports nutrition. I studied um, pain. Uh, I became a, a pain performance specialist just to consolidate everything. I put it together. But what it so happened that people started noticing these changes, not in my body, but my career as well was picking up, which was so interesting at that point. I thought it was a coincidence that just the fact that, yes, my career was picking up, I was getting more money, my money doubled, tripled, right? 
whilst I was exercising, I was still as busy. If anything, I was a lot more busy. Uh, people ask, started asking me how I could, I was achieving all that. So I started sharing that stuff. And that's how, you know, Body and Band Vitality was actually born. I was like, wow, there's a lot of people that actually struggle with the same issues. Mm -hmm. So I started sharing that information. And that's when I realized actually it was not a coincidence because even the people I shared, you know, the fact, the efficiency in the case of getting workouts done and being healthy and investing that in their lives, the income levels was accelerated they become sharper, they became more productive. I was like, there is something here. So I started doing some research and I was actually the science behind that and how exercise and fitness does actually impact, you know, how we perform, how we show up. And, and that was my mission to educate people, right? To educate the masses that feel and look at exercise and fitness as just something that has to do with aesthetics, how we look, but there's more to it. What is not talked about is how we feel and how it helps us perform, how we show up on a daily basis. And that's, what the, that's where this book is actually predicated. It brings about the correlation between say our bank, our bank account and our health and fitness. And just to qualify that bank account, we can look at it from as a lit in a literal sense as money in our bank account, but also as a metaphor, right? In a case, whatever bank we want to feel, be it our energy bank, our productivity bank, it's all with that base. Our health and fitness is the foundation stone. Mm. So true. Do you want to carry on, mate, or is there? Yeah, sure. I, I think you carry on from that. So invariably, what I find is uh, when it comes to um, comes to health and fitness, because we get busy, and I speak to uh, maybe uh, most of my clients are like busy professionals or entrepreneurs, um, or, or in case of parents, and they tell me, Richie, I do understand the benefits of exercise, right? I do understand, appreciate it. I just don't have the time. I need to put food on the table. Right. And my thing there is, you know, it's not so much about time. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's the knowledge. Yeah. Right. It doesn't have to be binary in a case of your health and fitness. Right. And you putting food on the table or earning money. Right. It can be done in tandem. It can be done in concert. If anything, it's even more sweet at that point. Right. So what is lacking is knowledge. And when you talk about knowledge, there's so much knowledge out there, like on YouTube, wherever it is now, but that's disorganized knowledge. What you need is what I call actionable knowledge, right? It's how you can actually apply that. Do you find the right blueprint to achieve the results you're actually looking for? And that is the stuff that is actually missing out there. So it's, it's about that educational phase that, right, you need exercise and fitness is not really an option, but a necessity uh, in, in life. And uh, that's, I think, something that is, I think, uh, uh, missing. And it's so easy for us to neglect health and fitness when we feel we're busy trying to put food on the table or get that income. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, and it just comes back to um, once somebody once said this, and this read is very profound. In a case of um, say something like a man with um, health and fitness has but a thousand dreams, right? But a man without health has but one dream. Yeah. And we leave it too too late. That's the problem with health and fitness. We don't we don't miss a workout or eat unhealthy and get hit at that moment in time, right? It takes a while. It's sort about of delays. But at times it hits us at that point, it might be a little bit too late to turn it around. Mm, so true. Yeah. I've got so many questions for you, mate. You've got sure. a, a fascinating story. And I can even see, for those who are watching this interview on YouTube, you're surrounded by lots of books. So I've gathered very quickly, obviously I've read your book, 
And I would recommend it to everyone, by the way, to read it because there's so much depth in it. And it's impossible to deliver that just in one podcast. But you can see you're a learning machine. There's lots of books behind you. Um, and you're someone who mentioned you were limited with time and you wanted to be able to be healthy, but you wanted to keep the time of exercise down to a minimum. But then you went on to say, then I decided to go and qualify in all these different areas, which must have taken up quite a lot of your time. Absolutely. How, how have you become such a, or so efficient almost in, in learning, not just like you said, learning all these things, but then actioning them as well. Maybe share, did you, was you already into personal development before you started looking into health and fitness? Like were you already started, obviously you studied your accountancy, et cetera. Do you have anything you can share with that? No, 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 really, actually. It's part of the growth. And uh, this is, I had actually have put together a model now, which I teach in the case of growing. And because it's something initially it came, I figured how I grew in the case of my career path. Um, when I started working out, it's one of those things that came not really naturally, but it almost evolved. And from being an accountant to setting up my own consultancy business, right, to setting up this coaching, um, um, two coaching businesses that I have. Um, yes, it took, it takes time, but I think it's more about knowing what you want mm. and growth is not really an option. Growth is a necessity. That's another thing. Growth is a necessity. The moment we stop growing is the moment we start dying. Right. Just think about it. I can go with it from say, when it comes to the physicality, uh, Physicality, you tie your hand in your back, you don't actually use it, what happens? It dies, right? It, it, the, the muscle weakens, what happens? It becomes weak. You put a seed in the ground, right? It doesn't grow, what happens? It dies, mm. right? Talk about money. You can talk about money, a hundred, uh, a 50 pound note today, I can put it under my mattress, right? 10 years down the line, it might still be a 50 pound note, but the value of that 50 pound note won't be 50 pound. Why? Because of this phenomenon called inflation. What happens? Because disuse, as I always say to my clients, disuse erodes value. Mm. So you disuse something, it erodes value. Same, we can go about even in a biblical sense, right? In the case of the parable of uh, the talents, in the case of uh, Jesus gave that parable of uh, that servant who planted his talent in the ground. What happened when the, the master came back? He even took that one talent that he had and gave it to somebody who had multiplied that talent. Mm -hmm. So growing is a necessity, uh, not, not an option. So when you ask about me growing in the case of reading, I have to make time for that. Because if I don't grow, right, what happens? You, you plateau and you conform. You become too familiar. And when you become too familiar, what happens? You conform and conformity, what, you know, leads to what? Death, right? In the case of growth. How old was you when you started really going hard on your, and being intentional about your own personal growth, do you know? Uh, yeah, I'm, I've always been quite, um, I'm one person who, once I make up my mind about going after something, uh, I go after it in the case of like setting goals. But it was something, I would say, at a point when I was like about 25, somewhere around there. But then I would just double in it. It was one of those things where I would listen to people like, um, listen to people like, say, Tony Rollins, you, would, you know, Jim Ron, like, you know, you, you know, this is a master's. You would listen to people like that, Zig Ziglar. You know, you listen to that stuff. But then for it to resonate, it's something that it took a bit of a while, right? Yeah. And, and, um, and I think growth, it has to be one, it has to be deliberate. Mm. It has to be intentional, right? And how long have you, you have been to intentionally grown? Obviously, you, you're a fit, intentional guy in great shape. I'm guessing you're 27, Richie. <laughs> You won't believe. <laughs> Go on. How old are you, mate? I'm about 40. Wow. Yeah. That's what you do because you, you, you can't, you can, you can age backwards as well. That's one thing I teach as well. If you look at my photos when I was in my 30s to now, 
right? You'd be amazed. Uh, you would actually think, I'm actually, if anything, I'm aging backwards. Yeah. But what? Because of the lifestyle, you, you know, you can actually apply in, 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 in your life. 100%. So no doubt, I know you're helping a lot of people. Yeah. What, what, what do you think are the reasons for, this has kind of gone off track a little bit, because I have like yeah. a list of questions I want to ask, but this has already got me speaking yeah. so much. Why do you think we're having like a, a global epidemic when it comes to obesity, malnourishment, uh, maybe mental health, even more importantly, like, because everything you're talking about here, anti-aging, feeling great, being productive, winning, being intentional, growing. Why is it that only maybe 3% of the, of the world are in that situation, whereas most people aren't? and are really struggling and hurting through these times, what do you think is the big problem? Growth, once again, go back to growth. People conform. We are more comfortable. It's easy to conform and go with the status quo. Reason is growing is not easy. It's simple, but not easy. Think about it more. I look at it more like a pyramid, right? Or a mountaintop. You can never climb a smooth mountain. Mm. People like it easy. And it's all about the disciplines you put in, right? The more disciplines, or as Zig Ziglar once said, it's, it's, it's what you plant in the valley. That's what you're going to eat when you get to the mountaintop. Now, no, people are not willing to plant that. We are, it's just a human nature, right? We always go for the road of less resistance. Mm. And what? When it comes to growth, what happens? We, we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. I have this saying in the case of discomfort precedes growth, right? For us to grow, right, we have to get uncomfortable. And that's what people are not comfortable with. Uh, I was talking to my son. My son was asking me this question, actually. This is a very good question in the case of, um, yeah, this was very actually profound. He was like, dad, why is it that all the good stuff, right, that seems to taste good, feel good. It's supposed to be bad for you. And all the stuff that tastes good, feels good, you know, is supposed to be bad for you. It got me thinking. I was like, actually, he's got a point. But then it got me thinking. It took me a few minutes to think about it. I was like, no, son, actually, it's, it's, it's not like that, right? Life is about two delays, right? Life is about two delays, a delayed pain and delayed gain, right? Now, with... With delayed, with delayed pain, you know, what happens is we get that instant gratification, that instant kick. Like you're having fast food, what happens? You feel good at that point in time. That dopamine hit, right? But what happens down the line, you keep on consistently with that stuff. Down the line, it catches up with you. Mm. Delayed pain. And delayed pain tends to be so much heavier than that discomfort. Right, th th then that, it gets to be heavier than that instant gratification at that point. Whereas with delayed gain, right, you can be uncomfortable initially. It feels uncomfortable, right? But the benefits, you're eating healthier, right? You're putting in the workouts, it feels uncomfortable at that point. But what happens down the line? You get the benefits. Yeah. Right? And those benefits so much far outweigh that discomfort you experienced earlier on. But what we don't realize is that life is about two delays. But what we tend to go for is a road of less resistance, which is the kick of that instant gratification. And that's the reason most people, why people don't do it. Because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. It's simple, but not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the quote, if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. And if you do what's easy, absolutely. Easy. Absolutely. Let's say what the warrior that sweats the most in training, what bleeds the least in battle. Right. So true. I know it, I've actually noted it. The successful warrior is the average man with laser like focus. That was in your book. And I, I love that. that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Very small, absolutely. Right? absolutely. I love yeah. it. So you also talk a lot about this. I've got some notes here that I really want to make sure we really go a little bit deeper on that. It's all obviously in the book. So guys, read the book. Obviously, you're getting value from Richie now anyway. But you talk a lot about limiting beliefs. I think this is another thing that so many people struggle with. 
um, is limiting beliefs when it comes to maybe fear of success, fear of failure, fear, fear of anything, right? So they don't do anything through those limiting beliefs. How do you teach people to unlock their potential and to really move past those limiting beliefs? Or maybe how have you done it yourself? Yeah, I'm one person. Um, I'll just give you an example for, for myself. Let me believe I was quite comfortable with the consultancy business. It's been very good to me. And I'm one person who liked the background. I'm quite comfortable with the background. Yes, I, I deliver value, right? But being like on social media and being upfront with coaching was a whole new ball game. And I was not really comfortable with that, right? It can get uncomfortable. But because you have this thing where we always have this thing where maybe you have, um, you know, uh, you, you almost like imposter syndrome for some uh, lack of a better word as well. In the case of imposter syndrome, doubt and fear, how will my message be received? But in my case, if you ask me what changed and how I went past that is going beyond me looking at it's not about me. And if you've noticed, I still, even to date, I'm very awkward talking about me, even when I'm talking um, to say, like even networking, or whatever environment. But what relieves me, I get, I get more comfortable talking about how I can actually help somebody. Yeah, I'm and if, if I hold on, I was once told that if you don't share what you know, you're being selfish. Yeah. And I think there was also one impactful. You should be, I think, I can't remember who said that. I don't know if that's Graham, but you, you should be ashamed to die till you make an impact on, on another human being, right? And I was looking at myself, I was like, yes, I know this stuff. It has helped me greatly. And I'm comfortable in this corporate environment right now. But what impact am I doing mm. in helping another human being? Yes, maybe down the line, you can trickle it down with the consultancy stuff I'm doing, working with banks, delivering those transformational projects. You can trickle it down like taxes and stuff like that, but I cannot directly link it to how I can put a smile on somebody's face. Yeah. So with me, it's more when you look at it from that, the unlocking bit was more looking at it's not about me. It's how is it? that I can, I can help somebody else. And you know, it's all about mindset, that mindset shift. Um, and it all starts with that. Um, fear, worry, those, I call them the weeds. Those are the weeds that are gonna chalk our visions. Mm. You know, the, the weed, the, 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 you know, because we need to tend our minds. I, I think we had a chat, I think last time, uh, Jack, and how in my case, it's a daily ritual. Before I can start my day, I need to, I need to work on my mind. Yeah. I need to fortify my mind before anything else, right? Because we need that because, and it's not something that you have, you do once a month, you know, once a year, then you're going to have it. It's almost like having a, a bath or, you know, or, or, or eating, right? It's something that we have to consistently nurture and keep on doing. You talk a lot in your book about, having purpose have been strong on your why like talking to you i can see you have crystal clarity on like your reasons because obviously it's comfortable for you you've got a good salary but you're like no i need to show up i need to add more value because there's people out there that need my help but you can see you're really connected to your purpose and to your reasons why what would you say would be some good first steps for people that maybe are stuck a little bit in them their own head with imposter syndrome what's the first steps you would recommend someone to take is it just having time each day like you're, you're recommending in the morning just to really think because i think a lot of people are so busy so distracted so always looking at their phone or whatever they never really get present and actually think about the direction they're taking in their life so what kind of tips would you give for that it's actually a good point to raise that reason reason is key uh, actually one of the i think one of the first chapters because it's a five, with my book, it's based on the five pillars. And the very first pillar is reason, as in case of mindset. Reason is key because you need to have clarity of that. And in my case, be it my coaching clients that come in, be it for financial coaching or fitness coaching, we have to go through what I, or in the case of like the clarity or reason um, sort of um, 
exercise. And I found people that, or one of my clients, the clients that I take through this exercise don't only end, end up getting great results, but have very sustainable results all the way through. So yeah, so it's about getting clarity of, of, of reason, uh, going back to that. So with, with reason, why it's so important, and if I would use a strategy in that is once you go clarity of reason, because with reason, you actually feel it. If you go to deeper why, most people, they, will, they won't stick to anything that they're going after is because the reason is not deep enough. It's very skin deep, deep, right? Like, I just want to lose weight. You know, I just want to lose weight. You need to go down. You, know, you need to peel the onions. And I think I've got that exercise in the book I cover in how you need to get to the root cause, right? To the root real reason. Because once you get to that deeper reason or why, that's something you can tap onto. It's like fuel and tap, mm. right? And because you will feel it. It's about feeling. Uh, is it Maya Angelou had this, uh, he, she said this, like, you forget what people do to you. You forget, um, I can't remember what else uh, she said. You, you, you forget um, what people yeah, do to you and what people say, but you will never forget how people make you feel mm. because feelings are very powerful because once you get to that real reason, you will feel it. And with that feeling, right, you can always tap into it. That goes beyond using willpower, disciplines, or any of that stuff. Like in my case, what I do every morning, fortify myself, it's all backed up on the re deeper reason I have. Mm. Because the reason I have is so deep enough that's going to get me out of bed even when I don't feel like getting up early to, to prep myself. Yeah. So I think that's a starting point. It's that reason. I love it. Yeah. When the, when the why is strong, the how becomes easy, right? Absolutely. Clarity of that purpose, clarity of that reason, you know, all those disciplines, all that stuff you have to put in becomes so easy. So you've got in your book as well how you address exercises being used to battle depression and other disorders as well. This is so big. Like something Absolutely. people really need to be educated on so much more because – a lot of people they see exercise as the, what we said before this started is called the aesthetic reasons for exercising and that's all really whereas with what we were saying it's so much more than that it, for me i don't train for how it makes me look at all it's 99.9 percent .9 for how it makes me feel mentally um and i'm actually about to go and try because your workouts are shorter aren't they let's yeah. talk a little bit about that because I saw your workouts are like 20 minutes long. I'm actually going to go and try the yeah. workout you've got in your book in a minute outside. Um, awesome. I'm looking forward to it, so I'll share how that goes. But yeah, share a little bit about your reasoning behind that and then how simple that is then for anyone to not really have the excuse of, oh, I haven't got time because you don't even go to the gym, right? You've got, I know you've got your own gym at home, but you yeah, can go to my gym. Well, I can work out in my living room. <laughs> you can do this from anywhere. So yeah. all you need is 20 minutes and the decision to say, right, let's show up. So yeah, tell us a bit about your program. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned Delhi in the case of mental health and all that exercise, you know, stuff like GABA, you know, serotonin, uh, dopamine, all kind of stuff, which is good for our brains. But going back to the exercise, exercise, this is based on EPOC or, you know, exercise post oxygen consumption or in plain English, normally say this called afterburn. It's about activating that. This is a great thing about metabolic uh, conditioning or metabolic workouts so you don't need it's not so much about the calories you burn during that workout so if you go on um with the slow uh, say uh cardio say slow cardio you're going to uh, on a trade meal slow cardio you're going to burn say whatever it is it however long you're on there say you say 200 calories yeah that would be it once you're done you're done right with metabolic conditioning right you can just work with that 10, 20 minutes workout, right? You activate this in the case of like afterburn. What happens is you might not burn as maybe many calories as you did with a trade meal, 300 calories, 20 calories, or maybe 50 calories. But what it is, is it's after that, the afterburn. So you can keep on, you know, burning calories mm. even 48 hours after your workout, which is very powerful. Yeah and achieve those benefits. 
I don't work out hours. Most of my workouts are 20 minutes. No. 20 minutes. And I maintain like 10% body fat 365 days a year, right? And I pretty much eat anything I want. Yeah. So it's 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 really that knowledge that is lacking because people feel you, you know people that <laughs> go to the gym seven, eight, seven days a week, right? But they don't really extract the benefits of it. Yeah. And but then it's how it also makes you feel as well, because activating that, not only are you getting the benefits of maybe like uh, the burning of fat, but then you're activating all the good stuff, like say dopamine, serotonin. Mm. And it's, especially in this world we live in right now, there's so much, it's so very, very stressful. There's so much going on. Yeah. What happens? We're stressed. We've got cortisol levels, you know, being elevated. You got dopamine, uh, serotonin. These are stuff that nice neurotransmitters that actually counter that. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that I think um, we need to convey. And I think people need to be aware of that at times it's not so much about the length you spend in the gym, because that's what is normally what gets people to shy away from going on a workout program or exercise program because they feel or even the fear of a lot of people struggle to even go in the gym. Exactly. Yeah. About what other people will think yeah. of them or all of these things that aren't even real. Yeah. Whereas what you're saying is, and this is, it's just being educated, right? If people understood you can train from anywhere and you can get it done in as little as 20 minutes and you can, can continue burning. Whereas everyone seems to think, right, if I want to lose weight, I need to do loads of cardio. I need to run, I need to whatever. Whereas, yeah, you're going to burn more calories in that time of exercise, but the minute you stop running or stop cycling or whatever, it's pretty much done. You don't, you're not, the afterburn is, is gone. Whereas if you're doing metabolic training, like you said, and you're moving muscles and you're breaking muscle fibers down, they then have to recover, which then takes, which obviously expends energy for the next 24, 48 hours. And when you can combine that with someone who's got a high protein diet like yourself, obviously in your book, you mentioned about protein, the thermic effect of food, Half of what you eat protein wise is almost being expended in digestion. Absolutely. You become so efficient. And that's how someone like yourself can maintain such good body shape. But it all comes down to that understanding of just training in the right way and having the right nutrition plan. And what that can do when it comes to transforming not just how you look, but how you feel, like how you operate, how you perform, how your mental clarity is. It's really, really simple. Yet, it's been complicated more than ever I've found over the, I've been in the industry now 10 years and it always just keeps getting more confusing almost when you look at online at all the different ways of getting in shape. When really, if you just focus on the fundamentals, which is what you've done so well in your book, you can go, nah, you lot are all talking rubbish, 20 minutes a day and eating well, you, you can perform and, and like outperform your current self 10 X. Right. So yeah. Absolutely. It's a recipe process. And, and, and you're right, you just mentioned that because whatever the age, right, it's not so much because people at times have this excuse about age. And again, it's a knowledge. I've got this thing I normally teach in the case of what I call actionable knowledge. It's about three components, the DPA, right? In the case of doing, you have to do. Of course, it's a starting point. It's supposed to be obvious, but you have to do for it to be actionable knowledge. But then the, the, the next step is the process. What's the recipe? I like baking. I like a big banana bread, right? You might have the best ingredients, but if 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 those ingredients are not put in the right way, you won't get a good banana bread. I found that soon enough that you have, you know, you have to melt the butter, you have to put in the sugar and all that kind of stuff. If you have the best ingredients, but they're not in the right way, you won't get the, the best banana bread. But at the same time, there is thousands of recipes. Mm. But you need to follow one, right? It's just about following one where it's been tried and tested. Yeah. So you pretty much know you can sort of like get those same results over and over again because it's tried and tested. And that's the reason you got people like going on right now. There's so much knowledge on the internet with YouTube world. So many workouts there, but the problem is they're so disorganized. You know, you can't just pick and choose and mix stuff up and hoping you're going to get a good banana bread, right? <laughs> it has to be in the right way mm. to set it up. 
Then the A, DPA, the last one is for you to get those results, for you to be actionable knowledge is about now in the case of at times, what, what comes into there as well is that accountability as well, right? Yeah. Because accountability is actually key. Do you have an accountability partner so you can then ingrain it? It becomes part of you. Mm. Yeah. Do you have an accountability partner for multiple different like areas of your life, like maybe business, nutrition? Like, what do you personally do? Absolutely, I believe in account- accountability. Is so huge. That's the reason I've always been not a big believer in putting together courses. I'm doing it now, but I've always looked at coaching because of the accountability fact. And you're right. I've got coaches in everything. I've had a coach in. I've got a business coach, right? I've had a speaking coach. So whatever stuff I'm looking at at that point, I would get a coach. Yeah. Um, I've always been in martial arts. And I've got coaches in that in different uh, martial arts disciplines that I do, right? I've got, um, what? When I was writing my book, I got a coach to help me in the case of how I could actually do it in an efficient way. Yeah. No trial and error, but in an efficient way, Right. So I've got coaches in everything. I've got accountability partners. I've got, I belong to different masterminds as well. Again, don't get me wrong. It's not so much about just having too much information and getting that information. It's about what ideas can you get from that? Being a sponge, right? And learning, continue to grow. But then finding what exactly works for you in relation to your values, to your philosophy? Is it in line? Mm-hmm. Bruce had this saying, I'm a, I've am done Jit Kendo for quite, for quite a long time. And Bruce had this saying in a case of like, you know, it's not about accumulation. It's about in a case of use what you can and, you know, discard what, what you don't need to use. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 it's more about, it's more about that. I love it. Mate, I could talk to you all day about this. <laughs> So I've got a couple more questions. I, I know you're a busy man. And I appreciate your time. So I can see there's lots of books behind you. I can see you're uh, a man, very wise man. Tell me three books you'd recommend to any of the listeners or maybe to even like your son. Like what would be the, f- the first three books you'd be like, that'll put him on a good path? Uh, the first one, when it comes to finances, I would say Richest Man in Babylon. I think I have it here. I've got both my kids, um, that book, <laughs> which is Man in Babylon, I think is one of them. I think it's, it, it's an awesome book. Um, when it comes, it's so concise, very short. Yeah. And it's a story form as well. Anybody can read that. Um, for Mindset, A Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Frankl. Um, I love that book. It's, uh, it, it, it's an awesome book. Um, as a Man Thinketh. Very small book. Oh, when I'm with the books, I can go on and on. Um, there's so many to think about. Um, which other one? Of course. Uh, with habits. Habits is also very good. This one. Um, Atomic, Atomic habits. habits. Yeah, nice. Yeah. By uh, James Clear is, is also a very good book. Yeah, there's certain books that you keep on going back to and refer to and read over and over again. But what, what are you reading at the moment? Wow, what am I reading at the moment? I just reread, um, which is actually very profound. Um, uh, Be so good that he cannot be ignored. I think. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember, his t- I, hate the, I can't remember the author now. Do you read or audio as well? Uh, it just varies both depending on for the most part I read I like a physical book um, I got this technique I think we shared this in the past and how at times I can speed read there's some certain books I skim through them mm-hmm. get all the stuff then there's some I study yeah right there's some I study and spend so much time in there um, and what I would do is because I do drive quite a bit sometimes so I would have it maybe playing in the background and and um, just listening and just absorbing yeah, nice. uh, as I drive around. Um, I've got Audible, and Audible is has been a, is such a saver um, for me. 
Understood. So at times I would, I would be listening and be, be going through the book. It's one strategy I picked up from somebody I can't remember. It's been a few years, and it's just so great and how you can get through books mm -hmm. in such a short space of time. I love it. I love it. So last question before I ask you where people can find your stuff, mate. So. What advice would you give if you walk into, I don't know if you go to Starbucks, but say you go into a Starbucks today and your 18 year old self is sat there with a coffee on his own and you can sit with him and you can share just one bit of advice. What do you say? I would say, um, keep growing. Um, growth, you know, Whatever the age, I think if it's something that I wish I had, I had known earlier in the case of how um, there's no limit to how much we can learn and how much we can actually absorb, right? And, and keep on growing. And that growth is a necessity, not an option, yeah. right? And that life is a pyramid or, or life is pretty much it depends, you can choose where you want to end up. And I think those are the stuff, I think that's, I think if somebody had shared that with me is that it's up to you, the disciplines you put in and how far you can actually climb up those rings, right? How you can climb up that mountain. Mm. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, that's what I would. I love it, mate. I know you like to be in the background. But I think you need to embrace the fact that you need to get right in the middle now because you've got so much value, mate, that you can add to a lot of people. So I want to say thank you. I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for the book. I loved it. Excited to spend more time with you, mate. So where, where can people find your Instagram, like all your content, and where can they buy the book? Yeah, for the most part, um, Instagram um, is one of my preferred methods of uh, contact. You can find me at Real uh, Coach Richie. And that's my handle. And um, when it comes to the book, the book has got its own website. Uh, it's easy to find, www.bodyandbankconnection.com. I love it. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. Have you got any last words you want to share with people, like last bits of wisdom, just to help them finish off this episode? Keep growing. Growth is not an option. It's a necessity. Thanks, mate. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. What an episode. Thank you.